One of the most famous trials took place in Tennessee in 1925. Dr. Mather was one of the participants in that historic affair that became known as the Monkey Trial. The law was passed by the legislature of Tennessee on March 13, 1925. It made it a crime for any teacher in the public schools of Tennessee to teach any theory that denies the story of the divine creation of man as taught in the Bible, and to teach instead that um, man had descended from a lower order of animals. Uh, somehow, many of the men of religion in those days felt that uh, such an origin for man was destructive of the religious beliefs that were so vital in the life of many people throughout the country. Anyway, they passed the law. And immediately, the American Civil Liberties Union in New York City announced that if any teacher was arrested in Tennessee for violating that statute, the Civil Liberties Union would come to the defense of that teacher because in the eyes of the lawyers, associated with the ACLU, the Civil Liberties Union, such a restriction upon teaching in schools and colleges was a very serious violation of the freedoms that are guaranteed to all American citizens by our Constitution. So the Civil Liberties Union announced, and it was publicly spread throughout the papers, that if any teacher in Tennessee was arrested, the Civil Liberties Union would come to the defense. Well, shortly thereafter, some men in Dayton, Tennessee, got the idea that it would be a very fine thing for Dayton, a little sleepy town in the hills of the southern Appalachian area. It'd be a fine idea to have such a uh, trial held in Dayton. It would put Dayton on the map as uh, George Rapelier said uh, to um, the uh, chairman of the school committee. Uh, anyway, within a very few days, uh, George uh, Rapelier and uh, Doc Robinson persuaded a young school teacher, John Scopes, to uh, stand trial for a violation of that statute. Uh, John was a little bit reluctant, but when he was assured that uh, all expenses would be paid and no serious consequences would ensue, he said yes. And so he was indicted for violating that statute. This, of course, uh, was broadcast throughout the papers quite generally. Down in uh, Florida, Mr. William Jennings Bryan is still remembered as one of the great silver-tongued orators of his day. I remember I heard him speak myself when I was a student in Denison University in Granville, Ohio. Some of us young, young fellows from Denison walked seven miles uh, over to Newark, Ohio to uh, attend a uh, political rally at which William Jennings Bryan was the speaker. He was candidate for the presidency of the United States at that time. He was a, a magnificent uh, figure of a man and uh, had uh, spellbinding uh, characteristics so that he could take an audience and uh, wrap it up and do whatever he wanted to do with it. Uh, down in Florida, William Jennings Bryan uh, saw the papers that uh, John Scopes was going to be tried in Dayton, Tennessee. And so Mr. Bryan immediately announced that uh, he would go to Dayton, Tennessee to uh, assist in the uh, prosecution of this young uh, well, I think he characterized him as an atheist, an infidel, or an agnostic, or something of that sort. And of course, what he was doing was undermining the morals of uh, all of the boys and girls in uh, the Dayton High School. Publicity was given to that announcement. Up in Chicago, Mr. Clarence Darrow read the papers, and uh, he saw that Mr. Bryan was going to go to Dayton. Uh, Mr. Darrow had been a supporter of Mr. Bryan in his first campaign for the presidency of the United States way back when. But uh, Clarence Darrow 
thought that Mr. Bryan's religious ideas were absolutely idiotic. And he welcomed the opportunity to cross swords uh, with uh, Mr. Bryan on religious affairs. Well, the thought struck me there in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, that somebody ought to be in Dayton to defend a religion that would be respectable in the light of modern science. And I thought I knew what that religion was. So as it worked out, in accordance with uh, Roger Baldwin's uh, instructions, I arrived in uh, Dayton, Tennessee on uh, a Friday afternoon. The trial had been in session just about one week. When I got there, I was met with a very serious surprise. That very morning, Judge Ralston, who was uh, the judge in charge of the whole trial, had ruled that inasmuch as uh, the defense had, uh, had really admitted that uh, John Scopes had been teaching that uh, man was descended from a lower order of animal life, it was unnecessary for anybody to uh, testify concerning the relations between the theory of evolution and the stories of divine creation as uh, told in the Bible.